So welcome back, friends, to the continuation of our mystery, our mystery project. Actually, to my surprise, several of you have guessed it, and we'll be announcing uh, what that was at the end here, and then you can claim your prize, the first one who picked it. So a couple different things. So it was pretty much, uh, oh, most everyone agreed, and I have to say that we went with the number three leather. That was by, by, lar by, and far, by far the most popular choice of everyone, so that's what we'll be inlaying today. And, well, let's just jump right into it. This is my very first attempt at any sort of a leather inlay. I've seen this, like, you've, maybe you've seen that as well, in some of the old furniture, the old, uh, maybe the Victorian or the British furniture, where they would uh, do a heavy, like a, a leather, like in the center, and desks and, and coffee tables and different things. I've, I always really liked it. It's very pretty. So what I did is, is we just came in a quarter of an inch around all sides, and we'll do the other one together here. And then I took um, some shears, and I, um, I cut this down. Uh, to fit and then so also if you can't see there that this is all oops this is all recessed down here about a eh, 16th of an inch maybe a little bit less and the idea is to to glue this leather in here now that it sticks up proud because the the mortise in there or whatever we want to call it a rabbit or is going to um, be half the thickness of the leather that's what we were shooting for so and that is really pretty, it looks very nice. So let's go over here, we'll do this side together and then we'll, um, we'll go through the whole process until we're done. This is a, a tedious process that gives you a, an appreciation for um, the carpenters that did this sort of work on a, you know, on a, on a whole nother level. This is uh, bear skins and stone knives. in there. Once we get that roughed out with the chisel, we're going to use one of my favorite tools. This is the Stanley uh, number 71 hand plane. Just a beautiful, beautiful tool and uh, it's just so effective. It's, or it's not a hand plane, it's basically a hand router. And what you have is you have a, a flat bottom with two handles even looks similar, you know, where they got those two handles for the route, you know, the old the electric routers, it's the same type of thing. And then, and then a blade tool there that goes up and down on this dial uh, to adjust your thickness. It's just a delightful tool. And what that gives you is the ability to take things down like this, they're a little bit large, in, um, in a nice uniform and even thickness there. So we got that all cleaned up and recessed. It looks good. I I got a little over anxious there and got it and hit, pulled on that router too hard and broke that piece off right there. So that's uh, see that's the thing, you know, on this rudimentary things like the these or rudimentary stuff like uh, this one we're just learning on. You know, yeah, that, no big deal. But can you imagine if you had had been working on a piece of um, you know? Walnut that had taken years to cure and you know commission on a commission piece you know the the care that would go into that you would never do stuff like that and I mean, it just really makes you appreciate the uh, craftsmanship it's just incredible someone in the comments a couple videos back commented on my they, they weren't saying it to be nice commenting on my woodworking to be equivalent to that of a like a freshman woodshop class, and I, I don't dis, I don't disagree <laughs> with that. I've already said I've always said I didn't grow up using these tools, you know, and um, I don't have anyone to show me. I just watch videos like you guys on YouTube, and I share my experience. So yeah, don't don't confuse this with a, a proper woodworking channel. It's just uh, it's, we're just kind of trying to figure stuff out here together. Okay, let's cut this leather, and we'll uh, we'll see how that glues on there. Not sure the best way to go about this. I can use the use the first piece that seemed to work out okay. I just cut these with shears. It would be prob 
probably straighter, maybe better to cut it with the uh, a razor knife. Maybe we'll try that there. Let me put some pencil marks on here. We just need a little piece. Seems to fit in there pretty good. I'll make a little mark. All right, friends, let's see how it fits here. You know, I think what we'll do, we've got a rough side and a smooth side. Let's put the rough side up. It's going to be more durable, way more durable, the rough side. Let me give you an example. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. That's why in wildland firefighting, we, wear, we finally learned that we wear our boots. And we have them built differently um, than work boots have traditionally been done. So, you know, you take, you take a pair of work boots that have a nice, good quality leather like this here made out that's what they're made out of right and you've seen uh, you kick something that's sharp you've seen a knife go across right what happens when a knife goes across that look at that if i do that same cut on the rough side nowhere near as much you can see it does have a little bit of a cut in there but not very deep you know if i go really it doesn't take very much look at how light that was just the weight of the you know the weight of the blade there open that up if i do that same thing here on the rough side nowhere near as much so it really makes it makes the leather a lot stronger or a lot more durable uh, to have your boots built that way i'll show you how i laid out that the uh, the side here let me nothing worse than a wobbly handle we'll uh, plane off the uh, tool marks here first, with the saw blade marks. I have the hardest time remembering to use the tool well in the traditional woodworking type of workbench. I'm just, the reason why the tool well, so you never have tools in your way, and I, I have a bad habit of just not taking that extra step there and putting them back where they belong. Okay, so I've got this marking gauge uh, set for a quarter, a quarter inch uh, inside. I just left it, left it with the uh, as I had it with the other one. So we'll uh, we'll scribe here. I'm gonna go across the grain here. I have a hard time seeing those lines, so I've just been taking and laying a pencil line inside of it. It really helps identify the whole thing. To get that inside measurement, you can just use your quarter inch chisel, flush it to the inside of the notch there and give you your spot where you can't reach with the gauge. So we've got these leather strips fitted. I think we can go to the gluing down. I'm just going to use a, uh, just a regular contact cement. I, um, you know, I just like this old stuff. I, I went to the spray adhesives and stuff and I had nothing but failure after failure with those. So uh, you can't go wrong with the old contact cement. So I'm gonna cannibalize a, uh, a foam brush here. It'll give us a nice little applicator point. How contact cement works is you, uh, you've got to put it on both sides and then you've got to let it sit and dry. It depends on how much you use, but it can take 
you know, upwards of 20 minutes or so. Downside of contact cement is that it, uh, as soon as you touch the material to it, it sticks. You don't have any, as my dad calls it, you don't have any wiggle room. It is, um, once it, once it touches, it's, it's not, you're not going to shift it around. So you have to be really careful at lining up and that foam brush is working really good because I can get it into the corners. I want to remember these pieces left to left. Same thing here is what you have to put the contact cement on both sides. I think it's the fact that we're putting it on the smooth side is going to be better. I think it's going to adhere better if I had to guess. Over to larboard was the empty wilderness of Van Diemen's Land, and to starboard, the open sea leading to New Zealand and the South Seas. I think our glue is set up enough where we can see how it works. I don't know that I've ever used contact cement with leather, but that, oh, that looks nice, isn't it? Oh yeah, that fits on there really good. Really sticks good. That's that's nice. It's just sticking up a little bit, just like we wanted. One final detail we could do that's nice is to put the little bevel on it. I'll just be using the little, little Lee Nielsen there, their block plane. And we're going to put a a 45 degree chamfer and it'll come together at the points there. That looks nice there. That leather worked out just perfect. Are you ready to find out what we've been making? Well, several of you guessed it, but the first was I had to write it down. James Cole. James Cole, send me a, pr a private message and you will, uh, I will send you your reward through, send it through YouTube. Uh, so it is indeed a multi purpose ski vice. Ski vice? What's a ski vice? Well, those of you guys who ski will know um, you spend well, a fair amount of time uh, working on uh, sharpening edges and such and waxing uh, skis. And this, does, this I, what I, the, what I, how I designed this uh, was to work in several ways. First off, I wanted to be able to do skis and snowboards, being I do both. Um, and so it's wide enough to accept a snowboard or two skis. Now you can see why the leather uh, sitting proud over the wood, because, and especially the rough side, because it gives it uh, a, a, just a little bit of grip. It doesn't need to have much, but just a little bit of grip on there is nice and protects. It's that soft surface that so protects the PTEX base or the centered base, whatever you have. Now, the angle you can see over here is the, to bring the skis to work up on the edges. You need to be able to work on, on the bottoms and then turn them 90 degrees and do diamond stone, stoning and honing or so on the edges, and that puts it up like this. As is my custom, I'm going to be working from this side of the bench. That's why I put the groove on this side so that when I'm working on the edges, um, I'm not leaning over, or I'm not in an uncomfortable position. So what I thought I might would probably just do is maybe just make a couple wedges um, I can just demonstrate with here. I can just put in here. We'll do some wedges for the thinner skis. We have some, you know, thick snowboards and stuff. So I had to make it to accommodate the thickest one. Um, but that will, that lays in there very firmly, uh, very strong. Now I can, uh, when I want to, oh, come on, don't give me trouble here. When I want to work on the edges, uh, let's say with like a diamond stone here, um, I have a full clean sweep. I can go here and run that out. So that's a work on the edges. Once you have that, those sides done, we could pull, our, pull those wedges out and then, sorry, and then have um, the flat side of it here. So to do, basically do the, you know, the very same thing here, work waxing and uh, doing maintenance repairs and stuff on the, on the bases. So the question is going to come up, why in the world go to so much trouble uh, to do something like this? You could essentially stack up a couple four by fours and, and put a drywall screw into it and have the same thing. And, and that's true. And I'll, and I'll tell you why I was, um, so 
I was, I was wanting to make something like this, and so I went online, as, as you do, and, and when I search for things on the internet or kind of information, uh, I like to see pictures. I'll typically search something, and the first search that I'll look at will be an image search on Google, because um, I want to see, I want to get ideas and you know, what other guys have thought of, of how to do this. And there were a whole bunch of pictures of uh, the skier type, and I know the skier type, and I'm not casting aspersions because I used to be the skier type when I was I was uh, I used to patrol and be an, a snowboard instructor, uh, and I and I know the type. <laughs> Trust me. And that skier type uh, doesn't put a lot of emphasis on um, well, how I might say it is a craftsmanship. There were some of the most horrible looking things you'd ever seen before. I mean, it was plywood and and drywall screws sticking out, and I and I don't fault them because it's a different character. They're interested not in making, uh, making things so much as they are in getting out and having that experience. And anything, any time spent you know, doing any, from anything else when you get into that skier mindset uh, is nothing but a detraction. And so therefore they were putting these things up there that I mean, I, I would have been ashamed to put up myself, but that's because I'm burdened with uh, this uh, perfectionism maybe or whatever you want to call it that I, I, always, try, I always want to do the best I can. Maybe life would be easier and better if you weren't burdened with that and you could just go along and, as my granddad used to say, not sweat the small stuff um, and roll along through life and not get bogged down on uh, spending uh, six hours making ski blocks. Ski blocks. <laughs> That's a whole nother conversation in itself. But anyway, the, my point was, my dad and I were talking about this. He was over for Thanksgiving. And the, the thing that came up was this, what influenced me was this silly little vice stand that I built several years ago. This is a machinist vise that I like to have in the shop that I'll that I put on this clamp so I could uh, clamp it in my carpenter's vise when I'm doing small things you have of course you know I mean it's just handy and so I I could have just glued it and, and screwed that thing together but I took a little time and I cut a little uh, I cut a little rabbit in there and you see how it's maybe you can't as you can see it's recessed in there and I'll tell you what it's a sim it's a simple thing as my subscriber said it's a entry level or childhood project. But the fact that I took the time to do that, every time I use it, and I use it often, and every time I look at it, it gives me, it gives me a little bit of pleasure, a little bit of joy. And I look at that, and like, I'm glad that I took the time to do that. I know I didn't want to take the time to do it right uh, when, I, when that was originally a concept, and, but I've, all, I've forgotten that. I've forgotten all the time that went on it, and it continues to give me joy, just that simple little thing, that little detail in there. And I was thinking about the ski deals and looking at some of the ones that were online that I that I thought were, you know, just they just looked terrible. It was not something you'd ever be proud of or you would ever it would ever inspire you in any way. And so I resolved to, with my limited abilities here, I resolved to do something that that I that I was proud of, uh, that I enjoyed, that worked with a bench. Um, that didn't take up a bunch of space and uh, that I wouldn't be ashamed of if I ever wanted to show someone. So is it perfect? No, it's, it's not perfect. And I, learned, and I changed from my original design, as you may notice, but uh, that happens. But I enjoy it now. And, and for as long as I use it, um, I'll remember this video and this conversation that we had. I'll remember the time um, and I'll take a pleasure in owning it and working with it and, and the, the, I guess level of attention that went into it. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean, right? You know what I mean? So uh, that's it. What did we learn? Well, I don't know. We learned that, that uh, we learned how to make ski blocks. So that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.